Hey guys, how's it going? I just thought I'd have a little bit of fun uh, making another video uh, since, you know, we're only two weeks away from the end of uh, free updates, you know, uh, to Windows 10. Uh, after, you know, then to July, you're going to have to pay if you want to upgrade to Windows 10. I thought it would be fun just to uh, talk about not Windows 10, a me not Windows 10's immediate predecessor, but um, an operating system that was very much maligned in its day. And I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Um, and if you haven't figured out which one it is, it's Windows Vista, right? Um, and uh, when it came out, it, it I think it got a worse rap than what it actually deserves. Uh, because obviously here I have it in a virtual machine and it's basically it's it's fine I only really have one complaint about and I'm going to show you my main complaint about Windows Vista even with some tweaking okay uh, and this is my biggest complaint the Windows install directory tw takes up 22 gigs which is a lot now on my modern system my Windows 10 computer uh, it only takes up 15 gigs. That's 7 gigs less. Okay, that's a huge difference. And this is after running disk cleanup and C cleaner a few times. That's very inefficient. Uh, so that's my main complaint about Vista, but big deal. You know, um, you know, it's it it's uh, definitely a, a less uh, perfect version of Windows that is, uh, you know. It came out at the time. I mean, at first when it came out, it had it had issues. It had compatibility issues. There wasn't great driver support at first. Uh, you know, a lot of software didn't like it, but it quickly got very better. By the time Service Pack 1 for Vista was released, it was a very, honestly, very polished operating system by then. After that, it really didn't have many problems. Uh, I did actually run it for... Oh, I, I think I ran it for about three years because uh, I built uh, a PC back in 2000, right right around the time it came out, which was, when did it come out? Oh, it came out in 07. So, was it, was it 07? Yeah, so I, I built a machine, I guess, in 07. Um, and I used it for, well, I guess about two years because I actually got a copy of Windows 7 for free. So, Windows Vista, hilariously enough, is the last version of Windows I actually paid any money for. Right? I bought a copy of Windows Vista to throw on the machine I built back in 2007. And that thing was a dual core processor, 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, and I think the video card had 256 megs of RAM on it. I actually still have the machine upstairs. I still, I've upgraded it since then. It's got some more RAM in it. It's really the only upgrade I've done, but I actually still use it as kind of like a home theater PC. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, and of course I upgraded it to Windows 10, or not Windows 10. Well, yeah, Windows 7 a long time ago with the free copy, and then, of course, after that to Windows 10. It's now running Windows 10, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I think Windows Vista was a bit maligned, and... If you still have a computer that's running Windows Vista, it's still more or less a usable operating system even today. Now, the end of support for it is rapidly approaching. Um, it's going to stop being supported according to Microsoft's website. Uh, the end of support for it is April 11th of next year, 2017. So. If you're still running it after that, basically you're going to be in a Windows XP situation uh, where you get no official uh, support from Microsoft, which, you know, it's kind of crappy. Plus, software uh, support is already starting to dry up for Vista some. For example, Google Chrome here. Um, version 49, whatever is the last version that is working with it. Um, the current version of Chrome, at least as of when I record this, apparently is version 51. So, yeah, we're already a little bit behind in Google Chrome because Chrome just isn't 
uh, you know, isn't going to support, Google's not going to support it anymore, which honestly has to understandable. Vista has a tiny, tiny share of the operating system market nowadays. You know, no big deal. But here's the thing. Let's take a look at our good friend Firefox here. Oh, wrong button. Let's see, where is that? Yeah, where's the about version? There it is. Okay. That is the current version of Firefox. Let me make sure I got that actually up here. So I'll show you. This is my Windows 10 computer. Let's see here. Um, holy moly. Yep. Right there. That is a... Uh, that's the current version of Firefox and Windows 10. So obviously, Windows, or I'm sorry, Mozilla is going to continue to support Vista. I don't know for how long, but hey, it's still currently supported. And as you can see, you can do modern stuff such as watch YouTube videos in Vista, no problem. Oh, I wonder who made this video. The bald metal nerd coming at you. Oh, that dork. Okay, yeah, he made this video, obviously. Stuff's still going to work in Vista okay. So if you still have a Vista machine, is a secondary machine or whatever, you can keep using it. Um, if it's still your main machine, I'm really, really, really sorry. <laughs> you might want to consider getting something else. Um, but I might consider actually, uh, unless you have some software that actually requires Vista, I don't know what software that might be. Maybe you're the one person on Earth who knows what software actually requires Windows Vista and won't work either in XP or, you know, going older XP or newer, 7 or above, whatever. <laughs> anyway, my main point to all this Vista talk is I think Vista was a bit unfairly maligned. It did have some issues in the beginning, but they did get addressed, and Vista became, in my opinion, you know, a fairly usable operating system, you know, all things considered, now it's actually pretty stable, yada, yada, yada. That really was never at least a big problem for me, crashes or anything with it. At least for the couple of years that I ran. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, now I'm going to do some musings on other operating systems, okay? Um, so just bear with me, guys. I'm going to talk about... This is not a virtual machine. I'm actually uh, remoted onto uh, the one machine I have that I'm still running that... My one Windows, but well, no, I do have. T I'm sorry, I have two computers that I have not upgraded to Windows 10 that are Windows machines. I have a laptop that's running Windows 7 because I can't get everything to work perfectly hardware-wise and with Windows 10 with that with that laptop. So whatever, I have one laptop that's still running Windows 7 because of some slight hardware issues. I mean, it mostly works, but Windows 7 works better on it. Uh, and this other machine here, this is actually a desktop that I am uh, remote controlling through a program called VNC. I highly recommend it. It's great for remote controlling um, machines on your local network. Uh, what I use this for, uh, of course, is older games. So uh, I actually dual boot between XP and 7 on this thing. It works great. It's actually a really nice system, 16 gigs of RAM, 6-core processor, yada, yada, yada. It's a, it's about a 5-year-old PC, and it, and it works real well for me. Um, and what's funny, if you notice here, I don't want this to upgrade to Windows 10, so I actually loaded these two programs. Just load them into memory, and basically what it does, this one's called Never 10 from Gibson Research. It actually disables the Windows 10 upgrade. And GWX control panel goes a little bit further it lets you actually uh, delete, like if it if if your computer's already automatically downloaded the install files, you can delete them from here. You can delete like the updates in Windows related to Windows 10. You can do a, a few more things. So those are two programs I like to run to prevent Windows 10 from installing. And the ironic thing about it is, and the reason that went black is because with VNC, very often the desktop background is black. But you saw what the wallpaper was. Anyway, I digress. I'm, I'm getting off topic. Um, so the reason I'm remoted into this machine is actually kind of funny. I had, uh, since the deadline for Windows 10 upgrades is coming, um, I decided that I was going to upgrade this thing 
to Windows 10 because supposedly if you upgrade it once, uh, with basically Microsoft keeps some sort of a record of like your hardware configuration tied to a Windows 10 activation. And if you choose in the future, you can always install Windows 10. You don't need a product key or anything. It just installs, boom. So basically I did it as insurance uh, against you know, in case I ever decide in the future, by some wild chance, I want to upgrade this thing to Windows 10. That's why I did it. And, uh, but before I did upgrade it to Windows 10, I created an image of the hard drive with a program called Macrium. And I've had a huge amount of success doing that in the past. This time, though, I could not get, I, I created the image, and the image created just fine. But after, you know, I upgraded to Windows 10, I go back to load the XP and 7 image back onto this machine. It just wouldn't go. So I had the fun <laughs> of manually installing uh, Windows XP and Windows 7 on this thing again and doing all the updates and tweaks and all that fun stuff. All right. I, I messed with that for a few days. That was super enjoyable. Anyway, I digress. Um, Windows Vista, like I said, a little unfairly maligned, I think think. And lastly, I'm going to talk about Linux again, because why not? This is just something I found a little bit funny. All right. At least to me. This is Ubuntu here, as you can see, maybe. Come on. And VMware Tools is installed in this. And what that allows to happen is really nice integration between um, the OS and uh, basically the virtual machine and it works real well uh, the reason I'm showing this off is the resizing the dynamic resizing of the window is real nice so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and shut this down it works perfectly 100% right now but I'm gonna show you something funny here now, let's see Windows where's my Vista machine okay Vista it, as you can see if you see there in the system tray VMware tools is actually running but I do this, it doesn't dynamically resize. That's great. Now, I haven't tested this thing. It's acting like it's detecting new hardware. Now, I haven't tested this thing fully, but whatever. Um, it doesn't love life, so I'm going to go ahead and shut this sucker down, too, just, just for fun, right? Now, installing VMware tools in Windows uh, clients, for lack of a better term, is a bit easier than in Linux ones uh, for a number of reasons. I don't know why, I guess it, it just is. It's, it's just a simpler process. Of course, in Linux, it's a bit, um, like everything else, a little more complicated. You have to download, and it's basically like a zip file, and then you gotta mount it, extract it to the desktop, and then run term, you know commands in terminal to get it to work. Now, when I ran the standard uh, basically what I did since this here is Linux Mint and the reason I have a Linux Mint virtual machine is my uh, I went to my in-laws today and they were actually having which I will be uploading a vlog about um, they were having some issues with uh, their PC accessing the internet so I was like thinking, and they have a Ubuntu on there so I'm thinking to myself oh great don't tell me we got another I actually had to reinstall Ubuntu on their machine just to get their network to work once. That was a pain in the ass, so I was considering maybe switching them over to Linux Mint. But of course, what they failed to mention was they had, uh, you know, gotten a new desk, and uh, that desk when they moved, obviously moved the, you know, they had to unhook everything and hook it back in. Basically, they just plugged shit in wrong. It took me all five minutes to figure out what it, what was going on, fix it, and get them back online. So thankfully, I didn't have to reinstall any programs to, uh, you know, write it. I mean, I didn't have to reload the OS to get them going again. I just had to plug shit in, and they were fine. So that was a relief, to put it mildly. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to test Linux Mint for my own amusement, right? So... Uh, one thing I will say about Linux Mint, though, that is nice, since it's an Ubuntu derivative, the GDB trick that I showed in my last video about Linux versus Windows, it works uh, in Linux Mint as well, which is great. It's real, uh, you know, team viewers installed, the, see, it's right there. So it worked with both of the, uh, 
you know, both of those things, great. So I thought, okay, well, since this is an Ubuntu derivative, I should be able to, um, you know, do it exactly the same way as an Ubuntu. Well, I did this, and of course I got an error, right? <laughs> of course I got a goddamn error. It didn't work. Shit. So, uh, it led me to a link, which is this article here. And granted, anybody who's going to install VMware tools in a virtual machine is probably a technically minded person. This is not going to be something many computer neophytes are going to tackle, right? Um, but let me tell you something. Reading this, blah, blah, blah you know, you're just like, blah, 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 you're reading this shit, and you're like, whatever, how do I do it, right? Tells you, obtain the source code. Oh my god, it's not even like a package or anything. I wonder if that's actual, like, source code here. We're moving. Oh, shit. Come visit us. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Yeah, what's this download button here? What's what's this? Is this it? So what is this shit? Alright, so we down so we'll download it. <sighs> we'll save it, because I don't know what the fuck to do after we do that. So, alright, so I guess step one is you download it. Alright, so now it says, please fo to follow follow the guest operating system guide. Okay, so that's this tab. I already took the liberty of opening it. None of these are the VMware product I'm using, right? I'm using a uh, VMware player. None of these are it. Maybe the closest is Workstation, VMware Workstation. ESX is actually like um, what that is, something you actually load onto a server to run virtual machines from a server. It's not on a desktop. So I don't even know what the fuck. So I guess the closest this is is VMware Workstation. So we're going to scroll down here to Linux. Linux Mint, of course, is not on here. So we're going to look at Ubuntu and we'll look at 16.04, right? Okay, well. Go down to installation instructions. Um, uh huh. Select the Ubuntu to install power on the virtual machine. And then installation network proxy. What? VMware. VMware tools. Okay. Install. It doesn't. <laughs> This doesn't tell you anything. What the fuck? Install the traditional that is bundled with VM workstation. See, because this isn't that that product. This. Oh my god. VM. Okay. Oh, we already did that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're. See, knowledge base deploy. Look at this shit. It's just on and on and on and on and on and on. Holy fuck. See this again. It's an issue with Linux. This. This is why. And I would technically mind a person. At this point, the only way I would go down this rabbit hole further is if this was for a job. It is not. It's just for my own amusement. But I'll tell you what. I, I'm giving up because I don't care enough to keep following that rabbit hole. I proved what I needed to prove to myself about Linux Mint uh, with the uh, GW trick. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to do some musing on operating systems. Vista was kind of the main topic, but I felt, hey, why not talk about a number of them, make this a little more inclusive, all that. So, anyways, uh, down in the comments below, I really want to hear what you guys think. Hell, of anything I said, uh, what you, if you ever used Windows Vista, what you thought of it. Uh, if you've already upgraded to Windows 10, if you plan on upgrading to Windows 10 after the, uh, up, you know, I'm sorry, before the deadline, all that fun stuff. Anyway, if you did enjoy watching, please thumbs up, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. Hey guys, I just wanted to make an addendum here. Sorry about that. Um, there were a few points about Windows 8 that I wanted to make as well. Um, basically, Windows 8 faced a lot of the same criticisms as Windows Vista. Almost all of the same criticisms. And it did have a lot of the same problems, to be fair. Uh, it did have some problems with program compatibility at first and, and, a, few, and 
a few other things. Uh, and of course, when they removed the start pe menu, people really bitched up a storm about that. And that was an incredibly stupid move on Microsoft's part. I'm not going to say that it, it was really fucking stupid on their part. But honestly, if you just installed Classic Shell, ignored the, me the store and the apps, and went about your life, Windows 8 was totally fine. Honestly, I never, I, I actually ran that for a while. Yeah, I know I'm weird. I run all the sh shitty op, shitty ones. Uh, but honestly, if you installed Windows 8, or I'm sorry, not Windows 8, installed Classic Shell with it, it was fine. No problem. Ignored the Metro apps, installed Classic Shell. It was totally, totally fine as an operating system. Really no problem. It was actually bit better than Vista. When, when Vista first came out, it had more issues than Windows 8 did. Honestly, in my opinion, having used both, Windows 8, I thought, was superior to Windows Vista. Um, and if you're still running Windows 8, by any wild chance, do yourself a favor. Just upgrade to Windows 10. There's no reason to keep running Windows 8. And most of the irritations of Windows 8 are fixed in Windows 10. You actually have a start menu again, plus, you know, the modern apps, Metro apps, whatever the hell they're called. Uh, those don't run full screen. You actually you know, run in Windows. You know, not, not the full screen nonsense. So... I would highly recommend upgrading to Windows 10 if you are running Windows 8. But, again, if there's some really bizarre program that requires Windows 8 and you know about it, let me know. I'd be interested to hear. Anyway, that's it. See you guys next time.